been an extraordinary couple of weeks in South Africa, as it always is. We go from extraordinary period of weeks to extraordinary periods of weeks. But the Competition Commission's indictment of 17 local and foreign banks for alleged foreign exchange rigging shows our traders at these banks engaged in extracurricular activities designed to rig a market with a daily turnover of close to $50 billion. It didn't necessarily affect the levels of the RAND, but certainly the traders are thought to have profiteered by the spread in the currencies by colluding with one another to trade for their own pocket and for the pocket of their banks, as I assume, uh, for their benefit. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield, and tonight I'm joined by the head of the Competition Commission, Timmy Mkosi Bonakele, to talk about the investigation and how it is likely to end, although he doesn't make judgments like that. So let's talk about the investigation instead. When did it all start? I mean, this is a 2015 announcement that you made that there was evidence to suggest that between, what, 2007 and 2013, you believed there'd been some collusion to fix prices in the exchange market. That's right, Bruce. Uh, in April, we announced uh, officially that we were starting the investigation. But in fact, we had been kind of surveilling the, 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 the sector for uh, a couple of months before that. You will recall that there were investigations uh, both in Europe and, and United States that suggested that there was something wrong uh, with trading. Now, was that the LIBOR investigations, the, the fixing of interest rates, and that led you to conclude that there could be a connection between LIBOR and the currency markets, banks trading the RAND, and, uh, the, ra the RAND in and outside of South Africa? Yes, the, 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 the Americans and the Europeans started with, with LIBOR, uh, and this was maybe two years mm -hmm. uh, before we started, uh, and they later moved to trading, uh, actually. Uh, themselves, so they have had uh, s spent some time in th in the sector uh, uh, looking at various uh, types of conduct, uh, and we only came in later really with uh, with only trading as a focus. Now, are all of the banks that were investigated in the LIBOR scandal on your list of seventeen banks, local and international? I'm not so familiar with the LIBOR scandal. Okay. I mean, I, did, I was just following what the allegations were, but not necessarily everyone who was involved. Mm. But I think uh, you can make the assumption fairly that uh, a lot of the banks were involved in LIBOR uh, and they were also involved in, in, in this uh, currency trading. So if you look at the names in our list, it's pretty much almost all the banks mm. that were involved in currency trading. Mm. I mean, w how did the, 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 the process work? We believe, and you can confirm or deny, um, that APSA was the first to blow the whistle in South Africa, correct? Yes, uh, they, this followed uh, our announcement of the investigation. Uh, I should say that... Uh, so they didn't, they their, their, their help didn't spark the investigation. They came to you after you announced that you were investigating. That's correct, okay. uh, but they were the first. So right. our policies say if you are the first to approach the authorities, uh, then you, you would be the one who would get a, 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 a deal for some kind of immunity. Assuming full disclosure and full admission and maybe access to records? and you, you Cooperation, which yeah. includes uh, testifying, providing witnesses who will confirm what the conduct was about. Okay, so what information do you have that you can disclose at this point from APSA as to what their role was in what looks like a multifaceted uh, case of anti-competitive behavior? I'm not at liberty to say what's from APSA, but I can give you a summation of what we've got. Okay. I mean, we at least have uh, uh, witnesses who can attest to uh, this being a collusion amongst all those who are involved. Uh, and we have uh, enough information on the so-called chat rooms. So this is the Bloomberg platform where they were and Bloomberg and to Thomson each other. Reuters, they're little boxes That's where right, people yes. are able to talk. And there are, there's a track record. There is data which goes back years because these are companies Correct. keep the, those yes. chats. So we have all of those charts. Uh, so we have people who can interpret them for us. Uh, so we're pretty comfortable that there were also communications. Uh, uh, we are aware of that took place outside the trading platforms um, by phone and sometimes meetings. Okay. So, I mean, there's, there's a good chain of evidence to suggest that there was collusion. We can stop calling it alleged collusion. There was collusion. There's no doubt about that. Okay. I mean, I have to believe that before <laughs> I bring a case. <laughs> no, I mean, because it's a big deal to bring a case like this. I mean, any, a, any investigation into anti-competitive behavior, no matter what the sector, is a big deal. We've seen the consequences in the bread right. sector, we've seen the consequences in the construction sector, people have lost their careers and their livelihoods. Um, it, it's deadly serious. You now go into the banking sector and you're saying we have evidence. We don't know how big it is, but we have evidence that there was some collusion in currency trading. Do we know how big it was? 
Well, we, we know uh, that uh, it was a general practice. I mean, this is why uh, there have been findings already mm -hmm. in some other jurisdictions. So there's no doubt that there was widespread conduct. Call it culture if you want. Uh, we, we so we this goes beyond an isolated handful of one or two traders in this trading room, one or two traders in that trading room, talking to the traders in those rooms. A small clique of traders. You suggest it's bigger than that? Uh, yeah, the charts are quite comprehensive and they cover a variety of, of people in the banks and a number of banks. So four themselves. names at Absa, I think people, four names that came out of Absa, I think three out of Standard Bank, one out of Investec. You have bigger lists than that. Well, that's, we have to provide something for pleading so that mm -hmm. they can answer, but that's by no means suggesting that that's all we have in terms of evidence. Do you have more than that? Certainly, we have to run the case and we need, uh, uh, we settled with uh, Citibank, for an example, and part of the condition with them was also that they provide us with witnesses. Now, their information, you probably will not find it in the referral papers. No, not yet, anyway. Yes. Um, okay, so this then goes to suggest that actually the currency trading environment is far more rotten than a few bad apples. Well, it's premature for me to say that. I think people will see mm. during the hearings. What I can say, though, is almost everybody we spoke to outside the trading environment but who is familiar with trading was not so surprised about what we we came out with okay but you can't, but it's too early to say that it's widespread it's too early to say that it's endemic it's too early to say how far up and down the chain of command the knowledge of this behavior should have gone or, or right. what's your assessment it's it's you know i i i've we make sure that we don't uh, make wild speculations mm -hmm. here. Uh, we found what we found. Uh, I mean, we will see how far the chain of command uh, went during the hearing. The important thing, though, which I think is a message to both banks and uh, uh, regulators, is this suggests that this was widespread within the trading desks and seemed to be like a culture. So we don't want to wait for the case to be finished before we address that problem. No. Okay. So when and somebody suggested to me that it is interesting that the South African banks that are named had London operations. So Investec, um, APSA through its connections with, with Barclays Africa and Standard Bank, which in this period had a big London office. Um, First Rand and Ned Bank, not yet anyway, have, they haven't been implicated in this. So is this the London connection? Is that what you're investigating? That this is maybe hiring people from a Barclays trading room into APSA and hiring somebody from uh, a, a Citibank into uh, an Investec trading room, for example, could have led to that culture permeating? I don't know where the culture came from, but I do know that uh, the people we are implicating were based uh, both in London and New York. As well as, as Johannesburg. So there are people who are Johannesburg based who are participating in That's this right. level of collusion. Yes. Um, but is, is is it fair to assume that there is this international connection? The reason why First Rand and, and First Rand and Ned Bank are not fingered in this because at the time they had no big international trading presence. Absolutely. I mean, and 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 uh, I, I can tell you that even other jurisdictions, um, they are very excitement is a wrong word, but <laughs> they 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 are focusing. On, on the rent dollar uh, 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 pay because it's so it liquid and you know, it's, it's highly tradable. So, <clears throat> do you realize the complexity of what you're getting yourselves into, though, in terms of just this huge amount of data that is whizzing around the world every single day? And to try and penetrate that, I think it's quite complicated. It is, but this is the new era, uh, Bruce, of uh, uh, cartels. I mean, we, we are learning every mm. day that uh, cartels is not just going to be people in the future. Meet meeting in, in smoke screen rooms, you there's don't need algorithms, to do you can just do this. there's computers yeah. uh, that can in fact fix the price. I mean, <laughs> you don't need even a human element in certain instances. <sighs> so you, you have to up the game uh, 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 if you are to, to, to play in the bigger league. How much money are you throwing at this problem? So far, I can tell you we have investigated this with all the internal resources, with our internal resources. We haven't outsourced a, a, a bit of it. We may, uh, through the prosecution, see all the lawyers in town. Um, it, but it, it may need to be outsourced from the point of view of this is highly technical and uh, you, ca you can't afford to get this wrong because the consequence of it, uh, from a market's perspective, from a confidence perspective, even from a ratings perspective, for goodness sake, could be quite serious. That's right. But uh, the, the, the good thing is 
we are done with the investigation. Mm. So we know what we've got. Uh, we've managed to crack the system, if I may use the, mm. the, the word, uh, get into all the charts, interpret them. Uh, and we've done all of that with internal resources. I think prosecuting is going to be a different ball game. And, and that prosecuting now, you've handed that over to the competition tribunal. That's a separate process. It's the equivalent of a, of a high court process. That's right, yes. They, they will adjudicate, but we must still prosecute. Yeah. So we will be the prosecutor. We are the prosecutor in the system, uh, and they adjudicate. So we've got to call witnesses. We've got to, to have advocates. Uh, what are, what are the time frames now? on this? Very hard to tell uh, because there could be all sorts of uh, issues raised. <coughs> I mean, about it's become highly politicized. The timing of this, from a political point of view, is manna from heaven for some and a disaster for others. Uh, it, it's imperative that it's done <coughs> absolutely fairly and accurately, but also done quickly. Yes. Uh, I should say, though, that our timing uh, must not have any political considerations mm. in mind. So we will do it at a pace that we are able to do it, uh, and we will not coordinate timing with this or that other no. political event. But, is but it we must is do it, it properly. Is it I something that takes a year, or is it a year takes two or more years? Yeah. It can be set down for a hearing within a year. Oh uh, my goodness me, so this could drag that, on for years? That, that uh, yes, I mean, often in investigation, people challenge all mm. sorts of things, how we conducted the investigation, uh, fairness in the process. So people have rights. Sometimes they can go to court even before we can hear the merits just about how the investigation was, was conducted. But I hope that it can be finalized quickly. We are ready as the commission and indeed we've given even more information than we usually do in our pleadings to enable mm -hmm. the banks to be able to respond. I am hopeful that we should be able to have a hearing uh, within 12 months. Okay, Devin Kosi Bonagele, thank you very much. Big job and a really important investigation as well. Is the banking system rotten to the core, as some would like you to believe, or is this simply the goings-on and the shenanigans of the culture of the cut and thrust and the robust, boyish, good, good fun nature of a trading room? Or is it something in between? There will be more alarming findings from South Africa's private sector dealings, really not covering itself in glory, and of course, playing into the political hands of those who have got to, to use stuff from information in the public domains to their own ends. And Tottenham, of course, of course, pins on other market players do sleep well. Choose your banker carefully, and if you are engaged in any anti-competitive behaviour and this guy knocks on your door, just give up immediately. Thank you for watching. Good night.